this is going to be a long video. Maybe not real long, but long enough. Because I've been watching videos about college kids pissing and moaning and uh, upset because they feel like they've been scammed. They've been uh, lied to because they got their degree and they're not getting the jobs that they expect. Guess what? I've seen this in the 70s. My older sister, she was uh, went in for drafting and uh, huh, surprisingly enough, she couldn't get a job. So, in that field. So she moved to Colorado and did a little bit for a little while. And then they got rid of her. So, you know, and she was really good at what she did, man. But I wanted to tell you about my wife, man. My wife is amazing on so many levels. Number one, she beats the odds as far as being book smarts and street smarts. You can't get that in anybody nowadays, including myself. Well, anyway, so I asked her for a brief, brief summary so I could teach y'all college students a thing or two, all right, about the American dream and how it's achieved. She, we're both from, originally from Indiana, but uh, she moved to Florida with her baby girl at the time and stayed in a cousin's house, stayed, stayed with her cousin. The first work she found was with the profoundly mentally retarded, and that's what they called it back then. Okay, then now we're talking early 80s here. And uh, with the money she made from that, which was basically because of all the overtime that she would put in, uh, she was able to get a condo, okay? Usually when you think condo, you're thinking, ooh, didn't do too bad. Well, wait, it gets better. And she was able to save up some money on the side. And then this beautiful black girl that she worked with alongside at the Profound Mentally Retarded facility had told her about the Women's Rotary Club and that how they would pay her tuition for college after she met certain requirements. So she went to him, had to prove her GPA. There was, uh, from what I understand, several meetings as they looked over my wife's scholastic history and realized, yeah, we'll do it. So the first bit of college was paid by the Women's Rotary Club. However, Going to school, working, and trying to take care of her, her baby was a little bit difficult because there was no one there, not even her cousin or whatever, that was able to watch her little girl, you know, that, that much. So she had to stop working because she was wanting to become a nurse, and that was her main goal. So... You know, you do what you have to do because she knew that she'd get through college and things would be good. Hopefully. Like you all think, right? But you all have outstanding dreams. But nothing wrong with that. But reality's a bitch. So, she started school, ran out of money. In between car repairs, gasoline, food, all that stuff, just ran out of money. Became homeless. Had to stay at a homeless shelter. And you think, why would she drag her daughter through that? Why, why wouldn't she give her daughter up to a family member or something? Because love is love. And she was, and to, to this day, is the best mom I've ever seen in my life. And my mom was pretty badass. So, in amongst that homeless shelter, being there about a year, she had to do some dumpster diving. And luckily, there was a bakery that she had been doing that at that helped her out. And then she went to food banks. And then she was able to get on food stamps. But even then, she made a game of it, you know, with her and her daughter. Because the cans that they got didn't have labels on them. So they would play the game, shake the can of what's inside of it. 
Is it green beans? Is it corn? Is it this? Just a little side note there. You know, and that's how they survived. Then after a year of doing those kind of things, she looked at the college board where people were paying to have essays written for them and they would pay. And a lot of them paid really, really well. So she started writing essays. And uh, yeah, she was started raking in the money then, kind of helping out, you know. And so as she's going through school and starting to make this money and, and finally looking to get her own place, she started applying to different hospitals. Well, Nick Yu, which we all know that's the preemie babies, contacted her and told her as soon as she graduates, she'd have a job. She graduated on August 6th and on August 8th started working. October 15th of that same year, she passed her state board. Then she was able to get herself a nice town home on a great, great community in a, in a street there in Florida. And she went on to bigger, better things. She kept going back to colleges so she could learn more because that's how she is. She would work all holidays. She would work everything that other people wouldn't work. The only, only time she wanted off was for the Super Bowl. How American is that? So, what I'm saying, a lot of you don't have to go through what my wife went through. Okay? And that may be because you're blessed with a wealthy family. Or you're going to spend the rest of your life with college debt. It's a shame that you go to get a degree and you can't get the job that your, that your degree specifies. It sucks. I'd be majorly pissed off too. I'd burn a city down for that shit. <laughs> but you know what? My wife put in the effort. She'd work the double shifts. She would do all that. So then by 2002... When she retired or whatever, she was making around 200 grand a year and more because she worked her ass off, let alone being extremely brilliant. Her IQ's off the charts. Now, this is a woman who grow, grew up in a, the only white family in a black neighborhood up in Terre Haute, Indiana. The roughest neighborhood. Had to learn how to fight at the age of three. So she knows all about dirt poor. Going to bed hungry. Picking a penny up because every little bit helps. So while you're out there bitching and moaning, especially like this one girl I saw, that said she owes $80,000 when she could have got a 2023 Ford Bronco, you obviously don't have a fucking clue. If shit ever hits the fan here in the United States, a ton of you, and people who haven't gone to college, are going to learn a very valuable lesson in survival. Hope you're up for it. But don't hang all your hopes up on one dream. Always have a plan B. Or just keep plugging and working, and one day... You may end up with that dream job. God bless you.